After talking about the concept of kernels, we now want to learn more about the so-called support vector machine. Kernels provide a crucial advantage to support vector machines, but more on this later in the video. First, let's take a closer look at support vector machines, which we abbreviate with SVM. So what exactly is an SVM? An SVM, simply put, is a model which is commonly used for classification tasks. It can also be used in the regression setting, but we will focus on classification. The most important concept that we need to introduce first is the concept of a hyperplane. Let's consider a simple dataset where we have two classes, brown circles and gray squares. We now want to separate the two classes using a linear function. Is enough, right? In two-dimensional space, this is rather simple to understand, as we are just using a line to separate the classes. But what if we go to higher dimensions? In three-dimensional space, a linear separation of two classes can be seen as a straight cut between the two classes. Let's say we have a basket filled with brown balls and grey cubes, and we now perform a cut right in between to separate them. This cut is also called a hyperplane. It is difficult to visualize and imagine in space of higher dimension than 3, but I hope the concept is clear to you. Now, an SVM aims at finding the optimal hyperplane to separate the training data. But what does optimal mean in this context? Before that, however, we need to look at a major characteristic of SVMs. In contrast to other linear classifiers, which learn patterns that differ from class to class, SVMs are learning a decision function, which is supported by so-called support vectors. To be more specific, in our example where we have circle and square as classes, the SVM tries to find the square which is closest to the decision function. So in our case, we have one brown square, and one gray circle, which are closer to the decision function. The vectors pointing to those samples are now called support vectors. But what exactly do they support? While well, one could say they are supporting us to find a good decision boundary between squares and circles, using those support vectors, the SVM forms a hyperplane to separate the support vectors. But, well, why not this line instead of the previous one? Or this line? Or, well, you get the idea. There are infinite many possible hyperplanes you could fit in between our support vectors. This is where the question of finding the optimal hyperplane comes into play. The SVM defines optimality of the hyperplane by choosing the hyperplane with the biggest margin. So as an example, the hyperplane shows a rather slim margin as it is very close to one of the data points. If we tweak it a bit until we find a better one, we can clearly see that the margin for our new hyperplane is much bigger than before. Alright, so much for two-dimensional data. But what if our data is not linearly separable in our space? Similar to what we discussed in the earlier video about kernels, an SVM can project the data into higher dimensions where it eventually becomes linearly separable. But computing the coordinates of all data points in our new space can be very, very cost expensive. And this is exactly where the so-called kernel trick matters. As we have learned, kernel functions are functions that compute the distance of two given data points, which can be transformed to any other space using feature maps. Now, as our SVM aims at learning a decision boundary with a margin as big as possible, but also in a higher dimensional space, we simply use kernel functions as interface. So to sum up, we can calculate the distances of given data points in higher dimensional space using this appropriate kernel function. An SVM then finds the data points which are closest to the decision function. The support vectors learns the optimal hyperplane in an iterative process to separate those and voila! We now have a model that is able to classify our data sets.